I'm watching the awesome oscillator, and again, I told you, momentum signals have turned bearish. If they remain that way, seeing trending signals begin to turn bearish. But if we see the bullish reversal of conditions and break above, have the triangle on the minute chart break out back above the 10 here, we're stalling at the 10 period on the S&P. We get an upward resolution. We see a bullish reversal of conditions. We see momentum signals turn back to bullish. Relief rally with the uh, CPI data can go back up to the trend lines of the rising wedge upper channel of the, the price channel and test the upper boundary of the price channel and test those levels again. What we'll be watching for is do we continue to have a reversal of conditions and get rejection at the 10 or the rejection at the upper boundary of the cloud or the red dots and continue to have a reversal of conditions that comes down and takes out this level and we start seeing awesome oscillator go negative or does awesome oscillator tick back up and we try to get above that 10 period moving average and again we continue to hold below it. But here we tried to get above it but we got a gap and trap, okay? And that was at four hours, nearly four hours of selling. But so far we haven't confirmed that bar. And now we're kind of going sideways and bars are going from blue to red back to blue now, but we're stalling at the 10 period. If we clear the 10 period, we get above the red dots of resistance, 52.35 area, and we clear the upper boundary of the cloud at 52.38, then you get a bullish reversal of conditions. You're gonna go back and challenge the resistance zone. And if you do that, these two peaks right here, we moved slightly higher here, got the lower high from filling the gap. And if we go up through 52.38, that's the upper boundary of the cloud at the moment. I drop a little bit lower tomorrow, 52.37 or something, or 52.39, it changes every day. But if we clear the 52.38 area, and we clear the 10 period moving average at 52, uh, well, let's round up 52.14, then that puts the bulls back in the driver's seat if we get a bullish reversal of conditions. And that would be the signal that we're gonna go and try to go higher or at least attempt to challenge the highs or maybe do it. We clear these levels. If signals turn back, if momentum signals turn back to bullish, a good shot, you're gonna try to make new highs. Momentum signals start turning bullish, the uh, shorts are going to start covering their short positions and further triggering uh, the sh uh, the uh, triggering the uh, short uh, stops if we start moving above the resistance zone. This is where all the stops are. Okay, and if we start pushing up through this area right here, then you're likely on your way to try to clear that resistance zone, and then you can get green going on here and still form crazy as it is another reference point of a divergence. I mean, this is like multiple points of divergence in the daily time frame. On the other hand, the bearish scenario would be we get rejection, bearish reversal conditions remains, we start taking out the blue line, the 20 period, you start confirming down here, dropping below this low right here in the low 5100 range, and it's likely that you're gonna start a reversal. So we'll be watching. You do have a lower high and a lower low turn back up, then that's just going to mark a pullback. We know distribution has been taking place. We're seeing distribution, distribution starting to take place. Doesn't mean we can't still make new highs. We can until we get a confirmed reversal, which we do not have. Momentum signals, if they turn back to bullish, that's a, a red flag that we're going to go up and probably try to challenge the highs again and maybe make new highs moving towards 5,300 on the S&P 500. So we'll be watching. Coin is attempting a rally of its consolidation triangle, so the, the S&P and the stock market might do the same as well. Uh, the awesome oscillators look exactly the same. Got those hanging man candlesticks on Bitcoin and the S&P last week. Watching to see if those candlesticks mean anything. They have to be confirmed. Talked about it at great length and detail over the weekend on the S&P 500. But does this come up and form that, or does it go into the negative region and we get the reversal at the 10 period, or even if we go higher, do we get rejection at the red dots 52.35 area or the upper boundary of the cloud at the 52.38 area? NASDAQ, again, it's had other points where we've gotten a bearish reversal condition, but every single time it's corrected sideways. Again, it, does the Oslo oscillator go ahead and go negative? It's just above the center line right now. Uh, does it go ahead and go negative or does it try to turn back to uh, to positive, uh, turning it green, and remain in positive territory, I should say, 
and buy a little bit more time. And again, we could still see a divergence have one between the S&P and NASDAQ. NASDAQ did not make new highs. The S&P did. NVIDIA has not made new highs. It's still struggling, consolidating sideways, stage three top or consolidation, a bullish consolidation, one or the other. And the same thing here on the NASDAQ. We're stalling at the 10 period moving average. You get a candle of indecision. We were slightly lower here, about eight points at that 10 period for the second day in a row. Again, we dropped below it over here, went back and filled the gap. The Dow did not fill the gap. The S&P and NASDAQ did. But we came back up here and we filled the gap and then we had a gap and trap and we sold off again about four hours, almost four hours straight. Now we're rebounding back up. Well, S&P is above the 20 period. NASDAQ is stalling at it. It got above it to go to that 100 period install there, but we turned down and we closed again right at that 20 period moving average, uh, just a fraction underneath it. Things are going to turn bullish and we're going to get a bigger rebound get back above the 10 period moving averages. And if we're going to see things get a bigger rebound, we got to get above the cloud and the red dots of resistance. The upper boundary of the cloud is at 18,265. The red dots of resistance are at the 18,325 area. We got to be able to clear those levels uh, if we're going to try to get a bigger rally. You get rejection here, the 10 can cross below the 20. You got to come back and take out this low right here. Awesome oscillator's got to move negative, so we'll be watching. Do we get the sell-off with the CPI? We get a re rebound relief rally. Coming hot, and the market just ignores it like it did the last time around. See what happens, and maybe sells off with the PPI data. Actually, the short-term momentum in this video. Short-term momentum is still bullish at the moment. I'll be able to clear the 50-period moving average on the S&P 60-minute chart. NASDAQ 60-minute chart, if it tries to rally back above the 50, then we can move back. There's a resistance zone here. We've already filled the gap and we halted there. If we clear the minor high, which was our gap fill, then you have that resistance zone to contend with. And then this trend line right here, where we've been turning down off of. We, again, talked about over the weekend, if we go a little higher, that upper channel line, we never did quite hit it. And if we rally, we may be headed towards that level here. Again, we're trapped between the 200. We're just kind of jumping around the 200 here and the 50 directly below. If we get a bigger soft and come back and take out the slow, you're going to get that death cross and start a reversal. The chart has a boatload of negative divergences on it. So even if we try to rally back up, the move is likely doomed to failure. Those weekly signals will play out, but it still could be that we try to move above this high and you know come up here to extremes, or do we just roll over Signals move into the negative region and remain there. But these 200 period moving averages, again, uh, we've been trying to bounce off of the 200 here on NASDAQ. Do we do it again here or do we now break it, remain below it? We've tried to get back above it here, but it's kind of uh, going sideways at this point. So uh, we're going to go higher. We got to get above the 50. Bullish reversal conditions, and that would buy us more time. We'd likely head back towards this area, this trend line right here, which is near the level upper boundary of the rising wedge. When we peaked over here on NASDAQ a couple weeks ago, when we peaked over here, we did reach the upper boundary of the channel. We still may attempt to do it. We're starting the week off down eight points on the weekly chart. We've got all these oscillators rolling over, some of them trying to we rally further. Again, we've broken the trend line here, but if we rally further, get back above it, then you've got, again, trend line from these recent minor highs on the 60 minute chart or this upper channel line right here directly above that and the the minor highs that I've shown you were right there that trend line right there just directly overhead more of a back test uh, of the broken trend line kind of a back test of it weekly time frame but if we clear that level say we get a bigger rally again still might be able to reach this level with the high right here we never did reach this upper channel line. We don't have to. That may be all she wrote with the previous peak having reached a uh, form of the channel, but it's still possible that we reach that level uh, if we try to get a relief rally with CPI. So we'll be watching. But look at all these divergences. Again, they're rolling over. Now a few of them starting to roll over this week, but others have already done so. But you got a boatload of negative divergences. Again, that's exactly what we had at the 2021 top. The bullish divergence was present at the October 2022 bottom on all of these indicators, and you could just see it everywhere. 
And again, the top over here, the bottom down at the 2022 uh, October bottom. So again, this is likely going to produce a top. Can we still go higher? Until we get a confirmed reversal, yeah, you could still get it. Take out the 20. Now, NASDAQ is below the 20. The S&P is not. NASDAQ needs to get a follow through to the downside to see these confirmed reversals, and we don't have that yet. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. If you like the indicators, you like the charts, please let me know that by supporting the channel. Just follow the link below to take you to a secured site. You can donate any amount you want. Please consider helping out today. And I thank you for your consideration for that. Critical mass. Uh, we have found support at critical mass over and over here. We went sideways, slightly violated it, but found support, found support, found support, support, support. And here we broke it and now we're kind of right at it. So uh, critical mass is now going sideways. It's still blue. If we start dropping below critical mass, holding below it and it turns red, then the trend can change. But it's been blue consistently. I uh, got a little bit of red here when we went sideways and then it flipped right back to blue. But uh, again, below critical mass, getting back above it. Uh, again, it has been consistently blue. So if it flips to red, then we could see a reversal. I want to encourage you to watch the video all the way through. I tell you some very important things on the S&P 500, starting support and resistance and the trend lines watching for as we get the CPI data that we're either going to start the reversal or buy more time and get a bounce. We don't have a confirmed reversal yet. We may get it, but you want to be watching for. We do have a bearish reversal of conditions for NASDAQ and S&P. Uh, again, we need to see and, 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 and uh, Signals are turning, and you can see here, here's one of my momentum signals. But many trending signals are not changing yet. Not all the momentum signals have shifted. If we get a resolution up, they could turn back to bullish. We could get a bullish reversal of conditions. We need to see a confirmed reversal trend lines. More momentum signals turn bearish and see the trending signals begin to turn, going to get a reversal. Break the 20 period in the daily, break the 200 in the weekly, break the 10 week moving average in the weekly. That will give us a reversal. I don't have that yet. I'm going to just show you some of my momentum signals because we do have, let me just pull this down here so you can see it. We do have sell signals with momentum, but if they revert and turn back to bullish, say this turns back to bullish and we get a bullish reversal conditions, again, you still might get one more reference point of a diversions on some of our oscillators, which again, them have not yet turned negative. Again, we've some momentum signal shift. Here's the VWAP. We broke VWAP support. Now have VWAP resistance. You turn back and get back above it. Well, then momentum signals turn back to bullish. Momentum line is bearish on the S&P 500. We've seen it bearish before though, and then turn right back to bullish. If it turns back to bullish, we get back above it and it turns back to green. Momentum turns back to bullish. The swing trend line, still bullish, even though the momentum line is bearish. P daily here. And just looking at more momentum signals, we took out the rainbow cloud with that bar last week. And again, maybe it remains red and we start seeing more signals and we get confirmation, uh, you know, get a fall through or whatever. Bars remain negative, but we've seen it before where we've turned negative and turned right back to bullish. So again, uh, we'll be watching what happens with some of these momentum signals. Just like the bearish reversal of conditions. If we get back above the rainbow cloud, is the gap fill area high there, you get back above that rainbow cloud, then you're going to challenge the resistance zone here and possibly move higher. Trend lines I've been talking about, but right now, so far, rainbow cloud but look at the swing trend line it went from green to red a little hard to see there but it did go to red with that red bar and then it went back to green now so it's going back and forth really just showing we're going sideways so again you get rejection at the rainbow cloud here you start breaking this level that's bearish the momentum to the downside will continue you push up through the rainbow cloud you get a reversal condition if you clear the rainbow cloud as well uh, then again we could challenge the highs we've seen momentum signals turn I get a confirmed reversal and start seeing trending signals begin to change. Look here are some of my trending signals. And again, right now we haven't been able to break the lower boundary of the green cloud right here. Uh, and here again, I have the swing trend line still uh, green. It went from green to red to green, still green at this point. You got to have it turn red and you got to take out the lower boundary of the cloud and then see momentum go negative and see the trend change, which would go negative into the negative region here. As we've gone higher, this has remained positive. As we've gone higher, 
momentum has remained positive. So again, these would have to go negative and you'd have to take out this level if we're going to change the trend. So we'll be watching the rebound back up towards the trend line or boundary the channel or the broken uh, trend line from the uh, under the rising wedge. Or do we, uh, you know, and, and buy a little more time or do we start breaking down and changing the trend? Same thing here. I know distribution is taking place these little red dots throughout here and over here and the little stars. That's telling me distribution is taking place. Little arrow here is warning of a potential reversal, but it could be canceled out. Over here, we tried it. It was canceled out. We haven't triggered a sell signal. The buy signal from back over here is still in place. It was reaffirmed here. Tried to turn here. It couldn't do it. Going to try to turn here we'll see if it does it or not get a series of those arrows if we go back up and test this level and then turn you might get another one or distribution if we do so off again start taking out this is the critical mass cloud you take up the critical mass line in the critical mass cloud here then we could see a reversal if it turns red the signal would turn bearish like it did over here here we had uh Distribution going on, and again, a little hard to see because it's covered a little with the little arrow there, but that warned. We had the breakaway gap there, and that warned of a potential turn, and then we did see it reverse and confirmed. And reaffirmed a couple of times. More distribution. So again, and then this marks these as bottoms here. The bull signals came. So again, I'll be watching, but it could be that we get more distribution if we try to rally. Uh, could happen that we get a sell-off with, uh, with the CPI. Marks a reversal, but it's still possible that we try to rally with it. If the triangle on the 15-minute chart that I'm showing you in this video gets an upward resolution, for the 50-period moving average on the 60-minute chart. So just some things to be watching. But again, we clearly can see distribution is taking place uh, in these trading ranges uh, over here and over here. You do have distribution taking places. Again, if we go higher, you still may form a divergence right here and then turn down. Uh, if we start seeing oscillators go negative, the awesome oscillator go negative, then again, we got to take out the critical mass line and then remain below it and trigger a sell signal. I want to show you some of these signals. They're pretty amazing signals. They have warning signs that, hey, something is going to happen soon. Signals have remained consistently bullish. Seen momentum shift. A lot of the trending signals are still bullish, like right here, the trend on the, the critical mass line there is still bullish at this point you can clearly see the distribution points and it's saying hey maybe we have a top but don't rule out uh, if we clear the 50 period on the 60 minute chart uh, S&P can still challenge the resistance zone directly overhead when you that 60 minute chart in this video and if we rally it could take us up to these levels here that I've been talking about S&P daily the two trend lines of the rising wedge and the upper boundary of the channel S&P pretty much flat, the market pretty much mixed here uh, on lighter trading volume as we await the uh, CPI data. The CPI is supposed to come in three tenths of a, per of a percent on a month over month basis for the core and the headline number. Again, the over year number expected to be 3.5% higher than the 3.2% and the core the over year is supposed to be lower at 37 from the previous 3.8%. So just keep that in mind as we go in. Now, again, the last two months, we've seen misses on the estimates and the economic uh, CPI data coming in hotter than expected. That trend continues. Now, even if it doesn't, even if it, we take a breather, we try to rally back up. We know distribution is going on. Distribution signals are being triggered. We broke trend lines and we have not had a confirmation and follow through. It needs to happen. So off. Now, maybe it does. And if it does happen, we drop below the 20 period in the daily. We drop below the 200 in the 60 minute time frame. CPI could give us a confirmation. CPI also could give us a rally all by more distribution. And we're moving towards earnings season here as well. The other thing to note is that if we move one direction or the other with the CPI, uh, the very same day on Wednesday the 10th, we are going to get uh, the FOMC meeting uh, minutes from the last meeting. So do keep that in mind. The following day, we'll get the uh, the producer price index, which is wholesale inflation. So you're going to get back to back. Now, last time, last month, we saw the inflation data come in hot. We rallied on the CPI, but we sold off on the PPI data. May see something similar to that.
We try to rally or vice versa. We might sell off, maybe rebound. But really, again, get that confirmation of follow through. We got the confirmation on the breaking of the rising wedge, but we never got the follow through. The line that we broke previously uh, on the recent minor lows has not gotten a confirmation or follow through at all. Momentum signals, some momentum signals have turned bearish, but trending signals are still mostly bullish. We have to see a confirmation follow through to the trend lines if we're going to get a reversal. Again, the market was mixed today. We had the NASDAQ up and the down, the S&P down, but they were pretty much flat. The Dow was down uh, 11 points, uh, pretty much flat. S&P down uh, almost two points flat. We were pretty much flat on NASDAQ, but slightly higher. Tech 100 was slightly lower. So again, the market was pretty much flat, kind of mixed here with NASDAQ being up, S&P being down, Tech 100 was down. Also, the Russell was up half a percent. So you have a mixed market. And if I just move this a little bit, you can see the VIX was uh, down by five and a quarter percent today, hovering just above 15. The VIX turned down five and a quarter percent today. Again, it's holding above the 200 period. If it drops back below it, this gap down here. Okay. And we can get a bigger rally. If we hold above the 200, got to get the 50 above the 200 then you're gonna have volatility sharply increase. A couple of times we've tried to get above the 200, we've dropped back towards the 50 and overthrown it. We'll be watching to see if we do that here or not. Uh, the 50 is rising, the 10 20 period are getting above the 50 in a bullish arrangement. So we'll be watching to see if we get a pull, bigger pullback. Do we try to rally with CPI or do we volatility turn back up, hold above the 200, above the 50, start a reversal. For volatility to increase, we've got to take out this trend line on the VIX. The VIX has come up to this trend line right here and we've stalled. So again, you got to be able to clear that trend line. And then we have this other trend line from the previous peak over here. Uh, if we rally back up towards 2021. TD goes into positive territory this week or going forward at some point, And you can break the trend line that that's going to be uh, bullish for volatility, bearish for the S&P. If we turn off this trend line as we're starting to do, then you buy a little bit more time, that gap fill and the 50 period to be watching. However, stochastic turning back up here, but below 50, if it starts breaking above 50, then volatility will start increasing. Now I'm watching the Dow very closely because it's done more technical damage than the S&P 500. It's still holding below its 200 period here in the 60 minute time frame. The S&P hit it and bounced above it. Watching to see, does the 50 start dropping below the 200 or do we break this downward trend line on the Dow tomorrow or surrounding the CPI or, you know, come back down and then break it and come back up and still try to fill this gap up here. We, we saw the S&P and the NASDAQ fill the gap. The Dow never did it. We still may do it. So I'm watching this little channel right here on the 60 minute chart. And with this uh, low over here, we turned back up and got this little bullish diversions. And that gave us this rally back up to the momentum line right here and the little momentum cloud just under our 200 period. So if we pull back and go higher or if we try to go higher, I'll be watching, does the Dow try to get back above the 200 and the 50? And if it does, then we can rally towards filling the gap. And it may be that we try to do that with the CPI. The Dow can get back above that 200 period moving average, uh, and it, it, meaning that the bullish diversions here could take us up higher with momentum back up to try to fill that gap. This little miniature double top on the Dow, we have one on the S&P is 500 as well. If we can't and we hover in the negative region, we roll back over here in the negative region like we did right there, then again, that would be problematic if the S&P drops back below the 200. Again, for the market to sell off, S&P has to drop below the 200 period moving average and remain below it. It has to drop below the 20 in the daily, remain below it. It has to drop below the 10 week moving average and remain below it. So I'll be watching that. Now compare this with the S&P 500. Keeping in mind, again, the Dow when it rallied back up, it halted at the 50, never did fill that gap like the S&P 500, which went back up and tested those highs. Lower high. Again, the, both the Dow and the S&P pretty much flat today. Pretty much flat. Give us little candles of indecision on the daily time frame. So again, do we break down? S&P hit that 200 on the 60 minute chart here and we formed a little bullish divergence and we bounced, but we're stalling here at the momentum line. We're at the trending cloud right here and we're just kind of stalling at that 50 period. Do you see the 50 period directly overhead? Well, the Dow 
going just under the 200, the S&P is stalling under the 50 period moving average here in the 60 minute time frame. So again, do we end up rolling back over, taking out the 200 and selling off with the CPI data and get a confirmed reversal taking out this level right here? We got, that was the a follow through. That was a confirmation of the breakdown. We needed a follow through. We never got it. NASDAQ, uh, Dow, the Dow never filled the gap. NASDAQ did. It came back up here, but it got a gap and trap, at least so far. And we had that waterfall sell-off. Remember where we got nearly four hours of straight selling last week? Head of the jobs report, but then we rallied with the jobs report. The report came in strong, defying logic. I told you again, we, we've rallied with the CPI when it was hot, defying logic. I think the opposite would happen, but again, I told you that we saw the sell-off ahead of the report so we could see the rebound with it. We looked at the intraday charts uh, on that uh, day before the jobs report. So again, I'll be watching. Do we break up and try to challenge the resistance zone, which is the high here, and now these highs over here, and start trying to clear that and go back up to the resistance levels I've talked about? Or do we get the follow-through breakdown and push below that 200? If you do, then you're going to start your reversal in all likelihood a follow through move to the downside. So do, does momentum remain bullish and we come up here and maybe try to rally with the CPI and then peek out, roll back over, take out that 200 and remain below it. Now here's short term momentum, the S&P 500 60 minute chart. This is the short term trend or the swing, the current price swing, which is up. This is the micro trend here with the 60 minute chart. And as what we have is we have the same thing we have in the daily time frame. We have these multiple point divergences. Could still get another one if we do. You got the broken trend line right here of the rising wedge. We broke down, we back tested it, filling the gap. You could still back test it again or get something bigger. Come up to this trend line right here if we overthrow that. And you have upper channel line, which I'll show you on the daily chart in just a second, all coming in right there with these trend lines right here. So if we do rally, that's where we're going to test those trend lines, one of them. If we break down and we take out the 200, then we can get the beer sell off. Again, when you're below the 200, rejection at it, things are happening. When you're above it and finding support at it, good things are happening. Let me just say this, I've, I've seen some of, uh, and I've shown you some of my momentum signals have turned bearish, we got a reversal of conditions. A lot of the, the trending signals have not changed. And again, if we're, if we're going to get a sell off, we need to see the parameter go negative, bust below the 200 period moving average. That hasn't happened. We, we've bounced off the 200, dropping below it and remaining below it. So that's what needs to happen for a reversal. So uh, again, we'll be watching which way the CPI data moves the market. Do we get a rally with the sigh of relief? confirmation to the breakdown of this lower boundary of our rising wedge uh, a follow-through move say we've had the confirmation breaking the trend line we've, we've uh, broken down and we've confirmed it but we have not gotten the follow-through breaking below the 200 which is a necessity for a reversal now the same thing with the daily chart again we've dropped below the 20 period moving average i'll show you it up close in a minute again we the blue line right there we dropped below we got back above it and we're just kind of uh hovering right around that 10 period moving average i'll show you up close and you'll see it just know that if the divergences play out immediately then we take out that 20 period we take out the 200 in the in the 60 minute time frame and we start moving down towards these longer term moving averages start a reversal if we bounce again the lower boundary of the rising wedge comes into play again the upper boundary of the rising wedge or this upper channel line right here comes into play uh, and if we hit that lower boundary again it would intersect uh, with the upper boundary of the channel well, we do have ni a nice looking channel here so again do we buy a little bit more time and get a relief rally with the cpi or does it a final nail in the coffin and we start seeing these divergences begin to play out on the MACD and the RSI. RSI tried to break the 50 level and then it bounced off of it with the rebound off of the 20 period moving average. Now here it is up close that you can see again we broke the, the rising the lower boundary of the rising trend line based off of these lows over here and we overthrew it slightly to fill the gap and back test it and then we got that bearish engulfing candlestick it's not been confirmed. Now, again, maybe we get what we have with July and you get the bearish engulfing, you go up, you get a lower high, 
and then you come down and you confirm it. Okay, that that's what happened at the July 2023 peak. It could be though that again we come back and we try to challenge the resistance zone and hit this trend line again at the upper boundary of the channel. Should we try to take out the overhead resistance zone right there and move back up into this range and maybe go slightly higher or even try to hit this trend line if we get a more aggressive move uh, back up into that level as I've just shown you on the bigger chart. Now, we are halting at the 10 period moving average. We still have a reversal of conditions. A lot of momentum indicators have turned bearish. We've broken the trend line and when we come broke the trend line right here with this little doji we got uh the confirmation with the bearish engulfing but we never got the follow-through and we bounced and we bounced and we're back above the 20. so so do we get rejection here at the 10 do we drop back below the 20 here the blue line do we drop back below the 200 in the 60 minute time frame and start getting the sell off back towards the 50 back towards the cloud back towards the 200 and maybe the 400 period moving average if we get an aggressive decline? Or do we go up and try to make a new high? Now again, as I talked about over the weekend, it happened, we know distribution is going on up here. We know NASDAQ's been going sideways for six weeks straight. We tried to push back up and challenge the highs with the CPI data. It would trigger the stops for the shorts. Breakout would cause the, the, uh, the buyers to buy the breakout. We did get a out kind of a move and did go higher and then turned that was followed by a confirmed reversal damage both the bears and the bulls alike it would trigger all the stops on the bears and cause the bulls to buy potential top it is designed to do as much damage both bulls and bears as possible the way markets are designed again do we get rejection here at the 10 do we start dropping and losing that 20 that would be bearish do we lose the 200 in the 60 minute time frame that would be bearish or do we build upon the rally a little bit more time? So I'll be watching. We've got the bearish MACD crossover. Been that way before. The divergence is present. We're to go lower. The MACD is going to need to go in negative territory. The RSI is going to need to go below 50 and then be able to remain there. So that's what we're going to be watching. Do we get a big sell-off? And does it happen surrounding the CPI or is it some other catalyst? Just let me show you a few more of these charts. Here's the channel. Here's the rising wedge and, and the, uh, the trend line. Hey, got my trend line moved on me here. But again, if we try to rally uh, back up and the Dow tries to fill its gap, the S&P and NASDAQ already did. Again, we could rally up into this area right here, still have the channel, but still try to rally uh, slightly above, uh, above the previous high towards 5300. We put in a peak at 5265 or so area i showed you this rising wedge trend line up close that has broken and back tested but no uh we got confirmation but no follow through stalling at the 10 period and we'll see if the 10 period crosses the 20 but let me show you the other trend line and this is a trend line from the more recent minor lows we broke this trend line with the bearish engulfing candlestick but there's been no confirmation or follow through candlestick right here is the confirmation bar of the break of the lower boundary of the rising wedge so we need confirmation and a follow through with both this has had neither we're back testing the broken trend line and again just from excluding the shadow right there and coming up here hitting this low this low and coming up here tried to breach this area but bounced off the 20 period went up back up filled the gap and then we broke that 20 period now we're coming back up or we're back testing that trend line and testing our 10 period if we get rejection then we can get the confirmation here and the follow through with the break of the other trend line, start a reversal. But if we go up higher above the trend line, then again, the resistance zone comes into play, as I said, here and here. It take us to the lower boundary. If we get above this trend line, the lower boundary of the rising wedge once again, or that upper boundary of the channel that I just showed you. So just some trend lines I'm watching. Again, if we're going to go lower, you need confirmation and a follow through. You need to take out the 20 period, the blue line right there. You need to take out the 200 in the 60 minute time frame. So just some things that I'm watching. Going back to the intraday charts, as the S&P went sideways right here, it's forming a little triangle. So it could be a continuation to try to challenge that. Triangles can also be reversals. That really gave us a candle of indecision here on the daily chart in the form of a little spinning top candlestick. Is it a candlestick that's going to mark a turn back down? A rejection 
at the 10 period or a continuation of this bounce off of the uh, back above the 20 period moving average here. So candle of indecision gave us a sideways move that gave us a little triangle as we're consolidating just under the 50 period moving average here in the 60 minute chart and the momentum line, we're just consolidating under there. We're trapped between the 50 and the 200. We're consolidating just under it and we're resting and finding support by the way at the support and resistance line right here, that little orange line, which was acting as support uh, on the way up and we moved towards it a couple times and we bounced off of it many times consolidating and let me just show you on the 15 minute chart real fast we had that waterfall sell off on Thursday for nearly four hours straight we rebounded with the jobs report back up to the 200 here on the 15 minute chart consolidated under it we formed a little bull flag we broke out and then we came up and we stalled there again just under it and you're forming this little triangle now so again is it going to break up and get above the 200 or is it going to break down and go back and try to take out this low over here. So I didn't draw that very straight, but you can see the low that I'm talking about. So again, we are trapped. And that means that 60 minute chart directly overhead is that 50 period moving average, 200 here on the 15 minute chart. Directly below is the 200 that we bounced off of on the S&P in the 60 minute time frame. So we need a resolution. The S&P got to come back and break the 200 and get a reversal, or is it going to buy more time, get a break out of the triangle and break above the green line there, the 50 period, the momentum lines at that same uh, area. That's the purple line that you see right there. We're trapped between the two moving averages of 50 and the 200 here on the 60 minute chart.